All right, Honduras team. This is gonna be a little tutorial on how to teach a kid's Bible lesson. We've covered this before, but now that we're headed closer to the trip, and many of you will be teaching kids at some point during our week to some degree. Um, so today is gonna be on teaching a Bible lesson, but you can apply a lot of these tips to any time you're working with kids. The biggest thing is to be prepared, to smile and to have fun, be engaging. When you're prepared and you know your lesson well, you're able to be yourself and have fun and use gestures a little more than normal because you're not worried about the story or what you're doing quite so much. Um, so you probably all know the story of Naaman in the Bible. And so that is our BBS story. Now, when we're at Impacto, the church that we're partnering with, we are not teaching this story. Um, so I'm only giving the example of BBS and I'm not even gonna teach the whole story. So prepare, you all have your sheets. You can all prepare your lessons from there. Um, but when you're working with kids, it can be super intimidating, especially if you've never taught kids before or if you're not around kids very often. And so the biggest thing is just be friendly, like get on their level, have fun with them, make it personal, make it interactive, and just enjoy. It'll be a fun time. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm just gonna switch gears and you're gonna be my kids class, whatever class it is. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Tanya and I'm from Memphis, Tennessee in the United States. I'm pausing a little bit after what I say because we're gonna be working with a translator. I may not pause for the sake of time on this video, but just know after you say a few sentence, like a sentence or so, a phrase, then give your ministry partner time to translate that. So I'll start by doing that and then I'll probably wean away from that just for the sake of time on this video. I am from Memphis, Tennessee in the United States. I think I just said that part. And I'm so excited to be with you in Honduras. I love Honduras. I love coming to Honduras because I love telling people about Jesus. And that is what we are here to do today. But before we get to Jesus, we have another story we're going to talk about. Today's story comes from the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 5. And we're going to talk about a man named Naaman. Can you say Naaman? Naaman. Naaman will be the same, I believe, Honduras and English. So his name is Naaman, and he's from the book of 2 Kings. Can anybody tell me what part of the Bible 2 Kings is found in? Is it the Old Testament or the New Testament? Where is 2 Kings found? It's the Old Testament. There are two parts of the Bible. The first the first big part is the Old Testament. All of this is the Old Testament. And then all of this part is the New Testament. And we are gonna be in 2 Kings today, chapter five in the Old Testament. So there was a man named Naaman and he was a mighty warrior. Can you make big strong arms? He was a mighty warrior and he won lots of battles. So his king loved him and he had favor on him because he was so strong and so powerful. But Naaman had a problem. His problem was that he had a skin disease and that was called leprosy. Does anybody know what leprosy is? Leprosy makes your skin all funny looking and has spots all over it and nobody really wants to be around you. But Naaman wasn't like that. Naaman still got to fight and he still got to win battles, but he had the skin condition. But the king loved him, remember? And one time they went out for a battle and a little girl got kidnapped 
and they took the little girl, the Syrian army took the little girl to Naaman's house and she became a slave to Naaman's wife. Do you, anybody know what a slave is? Slaves typically aren't treated well, are they? And the Bible doesn't really tell us how this little girl was treated, but we do see how she responded living in their home. She must have loved the family because when she heard that Naaman had the skin disease, she wanted him to get well. And so she went to her master's wife and she said, I know a prophet, a man of God who can heal him. And so Naaman's wife told Naaman, she said, there's somebody who can heal you, but you have to go find them. And so he went to the king with a letter and the king tore his clothes. He tore all his clothes. He was so sad because he said, how can I heal a man? I'm just a man myself. How can I heal someone? But do you know what? That prophet that that little girl talked about, remember a prophet is a man of God. That prophet heard that the king was sad and had torn his clothes and he sent a message to the king and he said, send Naaman to me. And so Naaman got all of these gifts together. He got his fast horses and he started out for the prophet's house. Can you stomp your feet like you're in the horse's chariot? So Naaman headed out and he got to the prophet's house and he said, I've heard that you can heal me. Now I'm gonna pause our story here. You're gonna continue it going, but that's just a small little example of how to interact with kids. Um, so I think in there, hopefully it was engaging. Hopefully you saw a little interaction. I wasn't reading notes. I wasn't reading the Bible. I was telling the Bible story, but I wasn't looking down because you want to stay in line with the kids. You want them to be able to see your eyes. And um, I don't know the other thing I was gonna tell you, but you wanna keep them engaged the whole time. Oh, the other thing was be interactive. Um, so using your hands, I'm gonna try to find some gloves that you can wear and maybe they'll be spotty that you can put on during your lesson um, for the story of Naaman. And then also like stomp your feet like your horse says. Anything you can do during your storytelling time to make it engaging for the kids is gonna be super helpful. So I hope this was helpful for you. You're gonna do an awesome job. The biggest thing is to trust the Lord, pray, prepare, know the content, and then you will be able to teach it and have fun with it.